Hi, my name is Dr. English, and welcome to Atomic Structure 2, Ground versus Excited State. In this tutorial, we're specifically going to go over who was Niels Bohr, the Bohr model, principal energy levels, excited state, ground state, and a little bit of practice. So who was Niels Bohr? Niels Bohr basically took the work of Ernest Rutherford and expanded on the model of the atom. What he found was when atoms of an element are exposed to energy, a unique line spectrum characteristic of that element is observed. This line spectrum is also known as spectral lines or atomic emission spectrum. This is a spectrum that contains specific colors like the ones that we see here or wavelengths. Unlike a rainbow, a line spectrum is not continuous as you can see individual colors. The person that discovered this phenomenon was Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist. In 1913, Bohr took a glass tube filled with hydrogen gas and passed an electric current through it. When the light was passed through a prism, he observed four distinct colors. In order to explain this observation, Bohr had to revise Rutherford's model of the atom. Like Rutherford, Bohr also proposed a planetary model of the hydrogen atom. There is a positively charged nucleus with mass. However, the Bohr model focused on the behavior of electrons to explain the line spectrum phenomena. So now we're going to look at the Bohr model in more depth. Bohr said that the electron could orbit only in defined orbits or paths. Each path was a certain distance from the nucleus. Electrons in a specific orbit have a specific energy. Defined orbits are referred to as shells or principal energy levels. So here's what you need to know about this particular model. Shells that are close to the nucleus, like n equals 1, are at a low energy. As you move further away from the nucleus, like to n equals 2 or 3, 4, 5, or 6, the energy associated with each shell increases. So an electron found in the lowest shell right here would have a low energy, but an electron found in a shell that was much farther away from the nucleus had a higher energy. Now let's talk about the concept of excited state. Bohr's hypothesis to explain the spectra is as follows. The electrons would jump to a higher shell when electricity or energy passed through the tube and energized the electron. When these electrons gained energy, they were known to be in the excited state. So electrons must first absorb a specific amount of energy, which Bohr termed as a quantum of energy. So here we have a little simulation of electrons gaining energy and jumping to higher energy states. So energy comes in and an electron jumps. More energy comes in and an electron jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. More energy with the electron gaining enough energy to jump multiple levels. And finally, more energy coming in and the electron jumping again farther away from the nucleus. All of these electrons that you see right here are said to be in the excited state. They've jumped from a lower energy level or a lower shell up to a shell that is farther away from the nucleus and are now considered unstable. Now let's talk about ground state. Remember, all of these electrons that you see here have gained energy. So the atom is not stable in this excited state because the electrons are not at the lowest energy shell. In order for the atom to be stable again, the electrons must return to its original low energy orbit called the ground state. The electron cannot go back to its original orbit without first releasing the energy it absorbed. In the way that we would see it is photons of energy or light. So here again, we have another little simulation. So these electrons are going to go from the excited state back down to ground state and release energy in the form of light. So here's that electron moving down to a lower energy level. Ooh, fireworks. Here's another one and another one and finally one more going back down to the ground state. As a result of this, this explained Bohr's observation of the release of energy in the form of specific color bands or spectral lines. The key thing that you have to remember here is conservation of energy. The amount of energy absorbed as the electron went from ground state up to excited state 
was equal to the amount of energy released as the electron went from the excited state back down to ground state. So now it's time for a little bit of practice based on the concepts that you just learned. So stop, take a moment to read the questions, choose your answer, and we'll see how you do. Welcome back. Let's read through the questions and see if you got the right answer. When an excited electron in an atom moves to the ground state, the electron, okay, just by reading the question right here, we have an atom in the excited state going back down to the ground state. So A, absorbs energy as it moves to a higher energy state, absorbs energy as it moves to a lower energy state, emits energy as it moves to a higher energy state, emits energy as it moves to a lower energy state. The first thing that you need to know is what does the word emit mean? So emit is the same thing as release. And if I look at this, I can see that we're going from the excited state back down to the ground state. So that means we're going from a higher energy state down to a lower energy state. So this would be higher energy state back down to lower energy state. And in the process of going from a higher energy state back down to a lower energy state, we're not going to absorb energy. We're going to emit energy, emit. So let's look at the possible answers absorbs energy. Well, we're not absorbing energy, we're emitting energy. So A's out. Absorbs energy again. B's out. E emits energy as it moves to a higher energy state. Well, that's not the situation here. We're already in the excited state, so we're already in a higher energy state, and we want to go to a lower energy state or ground state. So C is out. E emits energy as it moves to a lower energy state. That is our correct answer. Because again, we're excited state up here, so we have high energy. We're going to a ground state, which is lower energy. And as a result, we're going to emit energy. Let's look at the second question. An electron in a sodium atom gains enough energy, gains enough energy to move from the third shell to the fourth shell. The sodium atom becomes a positive ion, a negative ion, an atom in the excited state, an atom in the ground state. Well, first, we're not losing any electrons here. We're just moving an electron from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. So we're dealing with atoms. So if it says atoms, that means protons equal electrons. Therefore, we're not making any ions. So A and B are out. Now, we're going from the third shell to the fourth shell, which means we're moving away from the nucleus. So the sodium atom becomes an atom in the excited state. So this is the correct choice because we're going from the third shell to the fourth shell. So the electron that's moving is becoming more excited as it gains more energy. So what did you learn in this little tutorial? We went over in a small amount of detail who was Niels Bohr. We looked at the Bohr model. We talked about principal energy levels, also known as shells. We talked about electrons in the excited state. We talked about electrons in ground state, and then we had a little practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.